All right, welcome back to game 10 of Luce's 2022 tournament where we were playing Flegra. It was turn 35, and the reason I was missing those turns is I'm actually coming back from a substitution. Uh, there will be another four turn gap later uh, for another substitution, just as fair warning. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's see, we finished research and construction, level six. So we have the lanterns now, that's excellent. Uh, now we're searching some enchantment. Uh, those will be for our battle summons, though definitely some other useful spells there. We have an absolute ton of site searching, but I think this is probably just an army uh, that didn't need to move and didn't have anything better to do. Since this is all the same province, uh, we did find a magic site out of it, so that's very nice. This looks like water gems. Of course, it's earth gems that we're really after, but you know, you can never be upset about gems. Uh, and then we witnessed some battles here, and then we are mostly fighting independence ourselves. So let's take a look at this. So we have Miklin attacking Vettiheim. Looks like this war is continuing. Um, Small-ish raiding squad, though fairly high investment in terms of sacreds. I'll have a pretty strong bless. Uh, so they will be able to absolutely mow down this probably six province defense. Relatively light province defense investment, yeah. Uh, they don't really even lose much of their chaff, so it seems like a reasonable rating group, though no Micklin expert. And uh, then we have Alm cleaning out. This is a throne, I think. Ooh, this looks interesting. Uh, so we have one of Alm's knight commanders, who is a hero, though not a national hero. He just uh, has a heroic trait here, heroic toughness. Who's more hit points? 40 hit points. He's got regeneration, double regeneration. Nice. Uh, Frostbrand, vine shield, cool stuff. Got some reinvigoration. Uh, I like it. He also has some friends here, probably for luck and body ethereal, and another friend, uh, probably iron warriors, uh, for some protection. Although, I do think he's up against a trampler. Yeah, so definitely still some danger here, although it does depend, right, if they only cast, he'll probably be okay, right? Bugs probably won't be a problem. Yeah, he gets poison resistance uh, from this hydra skin armor. Uh, and that will definitely help against the bugs. Of course, the bugs, yeah, they don't have great magic resistance. Uh, and they also do mundane damage, so the ethereal will help out a lot. The vine shield helping out a lot. Uh, the vine shield still works against vine ogres and vine men. And then, yeah, gnomes, earth gnomes are not fantastic. Uh, but, yeah, really, it's uh, this titan here who might squash him. Though ethereal is a pretty good defense uh, against uh, trampling, so... Yeah, he's not super killy, but killy enough, I think. Well, let's take a look and see. Yeah, battle round 20. He should have no problem with this, I think, other than the wild card of potentially being trampled. Um, if this guy was on advance and cast spell and could cast charm, that could maybe be a problem. Yeah, because this guy's magic resistance is quite low. You know, he's just a human after all. Uh, but it's pretty unlikely to happen, and they'll... Uh, the HP route will trigger, uh, so I don't think that he's going to have to resist any charm attempts, so it's really just a question of if he gets trampled, and we might skip here because it looks uh, he might have fallen asleep. Well, he's fine from a fatigue standpoint, but I think the spell casting, yeah, casting sleep, <laughs> and like I said, he doesn't actually have very good regeneration, so I think he's spending a decent number of turns asleep, but he's being protected by his vine shield, right? Vine shield still works when you're asleep, which is quite nice. Uh, so yeah, we'll probably cut forward <laughs> until something interesting happens. Okay, so since he is the attacker and it's about to be turn 90, I think he is about to route technically, but he's not going to be able to escape. Yeah, so there you go. Armies of Ulmer routed. Um, but it's going to be hard for him to get off because he's spending a lot of time sleeping. There have been a few moments where it looked like the Titan might get through, but since she's size 6, um, I think she's size 6. Yeah, definitely size 6. Uh, you know, somebody else was always able to squeeze into the square and, you know, he's just not killing enough. Uh, now there's some sleep cloud going on. Uh, so I do think this is going to go uh, all the way to the, well, you know, maybe, 50-50. Could go all the way to the end, in which case it's not impossible this guy comes away with it. But once he does wake up, he's pretty fast, whereas, like, yeah, so now you can see the independents have routed, uh, but they're pretty slow. Some of them are asleep. Uh, so this uh, kind of mostly works out for Ohm. I don't know, both of the casters are still there, so in some ways, like, this throne maybe got harder now? I don't know, hard to say. Um, but definitely a cool attempt. That low magic resistance against the nature magic uh, was a bit of a problem, so something to consider. Uh, but, you know, we like to see cool attempts like that. Uh, we are cleaning out some independence with our pretender. Uh, speaking of nature mages, <laughs> we've got some here. I'm sure we'll be fine. No magic resistance problems on our pretender, right? Well, not particularly high, uh, but luckily, you know, pretenders have... Uh, generally speaking, high magic resistance uh, built in. You also can't charm a pretender, so we're actually pretty safe uh, from nature magic here. We should be able to handle this. 
uh, without any trouble. Yeah, we snipe at least one of the commanders. No, I think that's the only commander, so yeah, we should be good. Indeed, our pretender does take a province. You know, not a great use of the pretender, but definitely you know, one that I've been doing as well. Uh, it's never a bad thing to be capturing provinces. I just wish, you know, yeah, definitely room for improvement uh, in my pretender builds, unquestionably. This one in particular, I feel, hasn't done uh, super well. And then, yeah, we have our double uh, Mouflon group here, double strength, and they're going up against more Vinemen. So it looks, I think we're clearing out uh, some of the Vinemen uh, that are kind of in Utgard's territory, uh, which is reasonable. Like, you know, if we can hold the province, uh, it'll definitely be helpful, but, you know, we'll see. It, it, some of these, if I recall, are fairly close uh, to Utgard's capital, so it might be kind of hard to hold. Also, the fact that this looks like it's a cave is not going to be great for us. Though apparently, uh, Vine Ogre is like no spirit sight or anything like that. Uh, so everybody's stats apparently are equally bad. So actually, it's fine that it's a cave. And indeed, our Mouflon are able to take it with no losses. Uh, and then we witness a battle between Utgard and Vettiheim. Uh, you know, I've, I've been saying that I'm not totally sure if they're still fighting. I don't think they were ever officially, like, had a ceasefire. Um, we definitely don't have full scouting. This just looks like a swarm raid. Uh, let's see if, yeah, not up against anything. So yeah, I don't know what the intensity level was at. It might just be a situation where we didn't have scouts in the right places. Uh, and then we have an attack against Utgard somewhere. Probably just a raid. Uh, no, just a ping uh, from one of our commanders. Taking a look. Yeah, this looks like a fort. And like, yeah, still some patrolling going on. We've, we've seen this before. Uh, so, And it is a scary force, definitely. Uh, and then this looks like the one of the final ba battles uh, for Gath. Mirignon assaulting Gath. Yeah, we've definitely seen this army before. I feel like possibly it's been reinforced. Gath has a lot of stuff back here, though. Unfortunately, a lot of it's not great. He does have some demon summons. Those are pretty effective. And he has a few of his sacreds. Uh, these Gibors, not actually sure what their bless is. Some ogres, you know, it's just some desperation summoning. The ogres are good at holding the walls up. So definitely a good last stand unit. A lot of these kind of crappy human infantry, I don't know. I guess they're fairly killy. They've got two attacks, but very low protection, so they're going to die really quickly. Uh, but he does have a ton of mages back here. Unfortunately, I think a lot of them are these sages. Yeah, I've seen this before from another Gath. I don't know. It seems really greedy. Uh, they're pretty effective researchers. Yeah, like the upkeep is so low. So I can, I definitely see like you know, why you would want to recruit a lot of these as Gath. I'm certainly no Gath expert. Um, they do have like a 10 or 20% chance to random into one path of magic, but most of them are not going to have any magic paths. And so like, yeah, I just don't really like recruiting mages that can't do anything. Though again, like the research to gold ratio is fantastic. So I can see the temptation, but I feel like this happens to Gath players a lot where maybe they invest too heavily in these and you know, it'd be nice to actually have some mages that could do something. Uh, but speaking of mages that can do something, uh, he does have a bunch of his cap onlys here uh, who look like they've been doing blood hunting. That makes sense. That's where, how he's been getting the demons, but, uh, I don't really see any blood slaves, like no gems. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, kind of disappointing. I guess maybe he just doesn't have any spells, you know, doesn't have any research yet that require gems. That seems unlikely though. Uh, so yeah, I think Marignon's going to absolutely <laughs> destroy this, unfortunately. Well, there's, you know, enough units here, um, and enough mages that like credible defense definitely could happen. Yeah. Flaming arrows. That's really going to suck again for these human infantry with their low protection and no shields. We have, uh, I think that's Arrowfend coming up. Yeah, Arrowfend uh, for Marignon, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's nice because the sling stones and the wall archers, but I think it's really, you know, his own crossbowman is what makes it even more important. Uh, so, like, yeah, I don't think... Gath at least holds the gate, which is good. Um, yeah, the devils went into the back, though, and they're just absolutely wrecking all the mages back here. So I think Marignon's going to come away with this without too many losses. Yeah, they do lose eight devils. Devils don't have a ton of protection. Uh, the flagellants, of course, you know, they die very easily. Uh, but otherwise, like, no significant losses. So pretty clean win for Marignon. Take out 174 units. A lot of mages, too. Yeah, a rough one for Gath. Not really sure what happened there. Uh, but this is probably somewhat good news for us because now Mirignon is free. So, you know, hopefully we can convince them uh, to attack Utgard. Because, you know, everybody loves attacking into a Hellblast. <laughs> uh, let's see, with some unexpected events, uh, the Burning Mountain has erupted. So the Gigantes have arrived. That is fantastic. So we can now recruit them out of our capital. We get one for free. Well, free. Uh, he's a hero. We don't pay for him uh, in terms of, you know, gold that's coming out of our treasury. Uh, we just lose 5,800 population <laughs> in our capital. So, you know, we pay, pay for him with future money. 
and a little bit of unrest uh, for good measure. So sure, why not? But, you know, hey, that's the nation. Uh, so this is a good thing here in Flegra. Uh, and then we have a plague. We lose more population. Yeah, you know, that's our misfortune scale. So that's, that's my choice. Uh, and then a ninja randomly attempts to assassinate one of our commanders. And since he's just a commander, the ninja does succeed. So that's, it could be worse. Uh, we do at least finish construction of a palisade. And I'll catch you guys after the jump. All right. This is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, this is the turn that I took back over from the sub, although <laughs> I'll sub out again here shortly. It's uh, been a little little crazy couple weeks, uh, but let's take a look at what we've got going on. Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, so my sub did take a good amount of ground, although actually quite a bit of it was from independence. Looks like we've been having a lot of uh, fine men events this game, maybe throne related, maybe just, you know, random luck. There is a lot of misfortune scales running around, so it probably has something to do with it. Uh, so, you know, we've retaken some territory and then taken some territory. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do like that. Uh, I think that I'm guessing that this was a situation where there weren't a ton of gam herdings here, right? Uh, so in the same way, I mean, this is where uh, I fought that losing battle, <laughs> right? Like not expecting uh, there to be, you know, massive province defense dump and all that kind of stuff before the fort was there. Uh, so I'm assuming that the game herdings were not here uh, and then they one turn moved from the capital being giants. You know, we've seen it before. Uh, so even though, you know, there's a lot of commitment here uh, and this is, you know, I, I told the sub like absolutely go for it, you know, if you're feeling it. And I mean, this is very similar uh, to what I did in the south, right, where I moved out thinking like, hey, this fort is empty, you know, not seeing uh, the game herdings near, you know, near enough by. And then they moved in, you know, because we're pretty much a one turn move army and like we can't really fix that although uh we do have tyrants now i should mention that i think that happened last turn or possibly no it was this turn yeah so it's this turn these fellows i believe should be a bit faster let's take a look we do have one uh here he is in the capital uh so yeah map move ugh, 12. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if your legs are snakes, uh, you know, that might slow you down a little bit. Uh, although snakes can be decently fast. Uh, but then again, I've never seen, you know, a giant snake man hybrid. So <laughs> can't argue with map move 12. Uh, we do have some, he's carrying some units forward. But, uh, you know, that's what the parentheses 12 is about, right? They're not particularly fast either. But, yeah, I guess we're not actually going to get any speed out of these, these guys. Because uh, I was thinking that's a possibility, right, where Utgard has not really been heavily garrisoning their forts, right? They've been relying on, you know, their fast map move. So like every time we move next to a fort, then they move their troops in. Uh, if we had a tyrant that could, you know, move across two provinces, we might be able to ambush and knock out the province defense, you know, unexpectedly with the tyrant. Uh, but at map move 12 and no feet slots, right? We can't like speed them up with boots. There probably are, I know there are mobility items that aren't on feet slots, but they're kind of few and far between. Like we give them like a flying carpet or something weird like that. Uh, so we'll see. I'm not saying that's off the table, uh, but that's definitely a thought, right? Because, you know, we've been pretty consistent uh, where, you know, we move our army out. Our armies are never going to be faster than one province uh, a turn. And Utgard has been sort of, I mean, I hesitate to even say taking advantage of that. I mean, I think they are trying to, you know, ambush by moving the army in uh, like afterwards. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, we kind of know that's going to happen already. So I'm not really sure if Utgard is gaining all that much uh, by garrisoning, you know, not their bordering province. I guess it, it does allow them to react to other threats more more easily and more central garrison locations. So that is nice. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty much since because we're so slow, right, there's, there's going to be no element of surprise. So we're going to have to walk into a lot of province defense uh, if we continue this relatively profitless war. Um, and yeah, that's that's another thing that the sub they're you know they're like yeah the position's not bad sucks about this war with Utgard though which definitely true you know we've kind of talked uh, at length about like the problems and I don't really think any of that's changed you know Utgard has reached out and with I don't know I hesitate to even call it an offer they said like supposing that Vettiheim is in a bad position in a couple turns which like sure could happen doesn't seem particularly likely like overall Vettiheim you know position against Micklin doesn't seem to have changed a ton we did witness Micklin raiding back you know it doesn't look like Micklin is collapsing or anything but 
it also doesn't really seem like Vettiheim is in trouble. Um, now, Marignan is about to finish, pretty much has finished with Gath. Like, Gath is more or less eliminated other than this vulturing from Vettiheim. So I'm guessing that, you know, Utgard has been in talks uh, with Marignan uh, to have them come in against Vettiheim. And, you know, Vettiheim is fighting three people, you know, especially if I back out against Utgard and, you know, free their hand to attack them. I don't really see any way that Vettiheim can win a 3v1. Like, that's very, very difficult. Uh, I have also reached out to Marignan now. Haven't really talked with that player yet. Uh, but, yeah, I, mean, I was pretty open. I just was, you know, said, hey, congratulations on Gath. What are you planning on doing next? I asked because I'm trying to figure out what to do about Utgard. Uh, so, you know, if they go in against Vettiheim, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> so, and Vettiheim is probably a more appealing target than Utgard. Um, I don't know. I mean, Utgard's Bless is nasty, and, you know, they are starting to catch up, right, as they're able to build more infrastructure and build more mages. Uh, but again, you know, the Hellblast Sacreds, in theory, does tend to fall off later in the game. Now, maybe they've taken enough territory. You know, they've taken roughly one nation's, one other nation's territory, a little less than that, uh, but they do at least have, like, another capital, which is pretty significant. So is that enough to offset, like, you know, the Hellbless aspect? Probably not for someone like Marignon, who's also taken another capital at this point and probably has much better scales. We don't actually know that for sure, but I recall seeing Marignon's Bless, and I don't recall it being that heavy. Yeah, so I went in to double check and <laughs> kind of going to eat those words immediately. Blood Vengeance is not cheap. Uh, Precision 3 is not crazy, but this is double attack skill. So, yeah, this is not, it's certainly not Hell Blessed. Uh, so they're going to have better scales than Utgard. Uh, but they might not have significantly better scales. Anyway, uh, we'll see what comes back, right? If they are interested in joining the fight against Utgard, then we probably will continue this war, right? Because I guess to finish the the offer that Utgard made is, you know, hey, what if Vettiheim is basically gone? Like, then will you leave me alone while I take Jabalba and eat Atlantis? And that, that was it. And I don't really understand that, um... I mean, I guess, like, in, in that case, like, the assumption is that we'll attack Micklin, because uh, that's pretty much our only other option, barring another weird and awkward war with Ulm, uh, which, in fairness, like, we're kind of prosecuting th the same. It's a little better, our war with Utgard, in terms of borders uh, versus Ulm, but, you know, it's both of them are, are awkward wars. Uh, but again, it's, it's like, it's not really, you know, it's like, okay, supposing that we do that, you know, we, we lose the two players that are friendliest to us right now. I don't think Utgard, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be happy with me if I were Utgard. So I don't, I think once they finish with that, those tasks, then we'll just end up fighting the same war, right? So it's the same situation that we've been in where this isn't a profitable war, but I also don't really see a way out of it just yet. So we're going to keep fighting it for now. Uh, we're going to retreat with these forces because uh, I especially split out. We have uh, all of our Mouflon up here. A little heavy uh, for a raiding group, but, you know, I mean, considering that some of the light raids that I've done have not worked out, you know, that's fair. Uh, and we are going to raid with the Pretender uh, <laughs> as the Eye Scooper, or the, sorry, the Eye Catcher, uh, which scoops out eyeballs. I uh, was not really planning on using this against uh, Province Defense, though I was planning on giving it to the Gorgon. I was the one uh, that forged it. I was thinking that this might just be uh, a useful thing uh, against Utgard's Sacreds, right? Just another way to surround our Gorgon uh, with a bunch of ineffective, you know, units that aren't really going to hurt us. Uh, that said, the eye catcher is like very short length, and Utgard does have uh, giants with with long length weapons, so repelling it could be a bit of a problem. Our pretender skills are pretty good, so uh, hopefully we would be able to get through. Uh, I also think that yeah, the eye catcher is armor negating damage, uh, so we should be able to scoop the eyes out of units that have been turned to stone. So anyway, <laughs> it's not going to be ideal for taking out province defense, but it should work. We don't really, like, we got the vine shield and we'll just turn the PD to stone. Uh, haven't changed the script here. We do still have the gems for Howl, but considering that we haven't been dropped on by the monolith yet, like, I don't know, you know. Uh, otherwise, we kind of have to, you know, take a turn in between where we're not raiding, you know, go to a place where we're safe from getting dropped on. Because uh, using Howl uh, against the PD, 
would probably still work, but you know, it's just a waste of gems, and then we wouldn't have the gems anyway for if we got dropped on by the monolith. So we're you know still at risk of getting dropped on by the monolith. But again, Utgard hasn't really shown a desire to do that yet. You know, that may change as we continue to be annoying with the pretender. Uh, but you know, we'll see. Gambling this turn. Uh, but I do think we're starting to get to the point where we might be able to take a fight uh, against Utgard. Because uh, now we do have the tyrants available. Uh, and our, the sub has queued up a tyrant for us, which is good. We're just finishing out uh, the last oppressor archon. And we'll probably just focus on trying to produce, you know, a tyrant every turn. They're an entire fort, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, this is going to cause us money problems, absolutely. I don't think they're sacred either, so their upkeep has got to be atrocious. Yeah, their upkeep is, wow. Uh, so in a lot of ways, like, we kind of want to lose the tyrants? I don't know. I mean, we're going to gear them out, so that's a ton of gems to be losing. Uh, yeah, I really don't understand Late Age Flegra yet, uh, if that's not already clear. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go for it. We're going to make some tyrants. And, like, right now we're pretty much at our maximum, our greatest peak in terms of power. So it's like if we're going to fight somebody, we should probably do it soon. So once we get, you know, a tyrant or two up, we may try a switcheroo where we move out with an army and bring a tyrant along and then we just attack with the tyrant and you know a small support crew uh, so that Utgard sets up to you know expecting to fight an army but instead they're just going to end up fighting only a tyrant uh, along with support related to that support uh, we're researching up to enchantment six is what we're aiming at uh, we have the sub also added enchantment seven which yeah i think this is a reasonable goal uh you know we Earthblood Deepwell like was kind of part of the plan. I don't think we can really realistically hit it at this point, considering the mistakes that I made setting up the Pretender, uh, and the fact that we just haven't really found a ton of Earth Gems. Our Earth income is not great, so hitting that 80 is going to be pretty tough. Uh, and then when you add on the fact that we pretty much have to empower, it's kind of out the window, uh, unless we just want to sit around and do nothing for quite some time. Uh, so we'll see if we stick with enchantment seven. Uh, we definitely want to hit six, and like that would probably be the other element. So we would just dump out a bunch of uh, you know these dragon teeth guys uh, alongside buffing up uh, our tyrant, right? And you know that's just a very different threat vector uh, than the armies that we've been displaying. Uh, so we'll see. We may also just throw in the army almost as a sacrifice to soften the situation up and then send the tyrant in or, you know, try to reverse it. Haven't really decided yet. We do have a few turns. Uh, you know, we're about to hit enchantment five, but it'll take us, you know, two, a couple turns to hit six. Related to the research, uh, we have hit construction six, so we have new construction options. We're not really utilizing them just yet, uh, other than lightless lanterns. Uh, so the sub threw on, you know, some forging of lightless lanterns. Definitely approve of that. Uh, I threw on a little bit extra. We do have a good amount of fire gems, uh, so we definitely want to turn, you know, quite a few of those into lanterns. There are still plenty of research goals out there that would be useful for us. Uh, otherwise, just recruiting troops uh, along the border, uh, you know, recruiting actually more of our infantry now. This is really just more for bodyguards for our mages, uh, especially with all the bugs that are going to be coming out from Utgard. We really do need more uh, bodyguards. Uh, you know, if we have a decent number of bodyguards, then the bugs are kind of a non-issue. If we have no bodyguards, bodyguards on our mages, uh, that's a problem. The bugs, you know, can kill our dudes in robes. And then let's see, we're probably doing more or less the same. Yeah, down here. Uh, building yeah, a lab here this turn. We'll start the Palisade next turn. So, you know, trying to get more infrastructure up for some of these more expensive mages. I don't know if we're going to be able to afford it, but, you know, we've talked about how the Flagrant Mage core is a bit on the questionable side. So we're going to try to mix in as many indies as we can. Uh, and the only other troop recruitment, you know, related to the lack of money, we can see that the unrest here is starting to get out of control. This is definitely uh, the monster boar. <laughs> so we, we need to get rid of that monster boar sooner rather than later. Uh, so we're recruiting, you know, a bunch more of these garbage archers just because they're, you know, decent enough patrol strength and they can at least participate in flaming arrows attacks. Also, we have a ton of unrest here from the mountain exploding and you know our population is nice and, and low and our income is just in an awful place. Uh, so we at least need to patrol down this unrest as well. 
Uh, so anyway, you know, <laughs> normal uh, late age flagrant problems. Uh, mage wise, otherwise nothing has really changed too much. Trying to make up the numbers in terms of the shackled mages. I talked about how yeah, went a little overboard I think on the oppressor uh, to shackled mage ratio, even though it is a little painful every shackled mage in a recruit because they're completely useless in battle like outside of a communion. So you do really have to be careful that you know you don't. I guess if you're going to be too heavy on something, probably better to be too heavy on the oppressors. But again, the oppressors are really unimpressive uh, if they're not in a communion so shackled mage over here as well at least they are cheap uh, otherwise you know thrown mages in the other locations uh, and that's kind of it for the moment right we're gonna probably move this guy forward and do a little sight searching as we do uh, they do unlock death for us so late age flagra does have death it just shows up really late obviously you know we haven't had any death so far so we have very little death income but you know, it's always nice to get some death income uh, so, you know, we're going to want to use at least one of these tyrants and, you know, probably all of them as they come out. The thing of it is, uh, they're also, you know, population killers. So we don't really want them to sit around in our territory. Yeah, they cause a ton of unrest. Yeah, I mean, you know, wreaking havoc, right? That's that's what these guys are good for. So we, we would prefer them uh, to wreak havoc in not our land, in our enemy's lands. Uh, so we will do some site searching with them, but it's probably going to aim to do it while they're on the move to somewhere that is not our lands. Uh, and then, you know, once we get probably just one or two of these guys fully geared out uh, and, you know, associated or hooked up with our armies, then we'll probably try our luck against these, you know, PD and Hellbless Sacred formations. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, like I said, hopefully, Ga uh, not Gath, hopefully Marignan comes back and says that they're interested in attacking Utgard, but I have a se sneaking suspicion that the reason Utgard is reaching out is they've been talking with Marignan and that Vettiheim uh, is next on the chopping block. And yeah, you know, we'll, ha we'll have to think if... At that point, we're probably going to need to abandon our alliance with Vettiheim because uh, I just I don't think there's any way that Vettiheim can survive, uh, you know, a 3v1 or maybe even a 2v1. You know, Marignan took out Gath relatively quickly, uh, and I know that they're supposed to be a, a decent player. Uh, and then, you know, if our other ally is Atlantis, who's not in a great place and is probably going to get attacked by Ulm in the not-too-distant future, uh, you know, basically we would probably have to try to switch gears, uh, end our non-aggression pact with Vettiheim and Atlantis, pick up what we can off of that, recognizing the fact that we're probably going to end up picking up the fight with Utgard almost immediately, because, uh, you know, Utgard is going to, as soon as we stop locking them in, you know, to this profitless war for both of us, uh, you know, they're going to start profiting off of Atlantis uh, and Vettiheim. Probably the thing to do would be to not respond to Utgard and, you know, continue to lock them in place and then end the non-aggression packs uh, with Vettiheim and Atlantis. Let that tick down and then once we're on an equal, equal uh, footing with Utgard in terms of being able to launch the war, right, then reach out and say like, yeah, okay, fine, let's stop fighting and then immediately shift into attacking Atlantis and Vettiheim and then try to race them and then, you know, just kind of, I mean, from there, like, we'll see, right? Maybe that immediately turns into a war with Utgard because we're trying to take the same land. Uh, but for the moment, I'm going to hold off on that. I do want to hear back from Marignan, even though I suspect that they're planning on going on going against Vettiheim. Might be one of those situations where, you know, they're 50-50 and they just hadn't heard from me. And, you know, they might be interested. It's like maybe they were planning on going on Vettiheim, but they could be convinced uh, to help attack Utgard. Because... Uh, I just I don't want to be the only one <laughs> to be eating these Hellblast Sacreds. Maybe we could win, maybe not, but there's no way that it's not a super bloody war and leaves both of us in a position where someone else is going to snap us up. Uh, so, you know, obviously we've, we've been wasting research. Uh, like, again, that's part of what makes this painful and profitless. And Utgard is losing research here too. You know, not as much, right, because they're not committing as many mages. Uh, so probably we're losing more uh, cause just because we have more mages on the move and this is more research that we're not getting uh, but you know the fact that Utgard is having to patrol periodically with a strong force I'm sure is frustrating uh, but you know if they want out they're gonna have to offer more generous terms uh, though like I said depending on how other diplomatic things go like we may exit but on our own terms uh, so anyway, yeah, a lot of talk about diplomacy <laughs> for whatever reason. It just hasn't really shook out this game. Probably just I haven't, you know, focused as much on this, had as much time uh, to think it all through. And diplomacy, I think, is always one of the most difficult parts of the game. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, that's that's the situation, and I think that more or less covers turn 35.